Today we're going to be continuing section 1 of the Cessna 172 flight sim project. If you're new to this series, check the link in the description below for the full playlist. Right here we have this profile and this profile. And I accidentally... <clears throat> here I have these two profiles and this time I actually switched the two, which is a little inconvenient. So that really took a negative turn on it, and it looked a little lopsided on both sides. Luckily, I didn't cut too close, and I could fix this mistake later. Whew! Just make sure you have everything oriented the correct direction. And so I can just re-glue these. This profile is all ready to be recut. Just gotta cut a little closer on the top, because there's about an inch of slack. And then... I want to leave mm, a little bit on the bottom. We can recut these, sand these, and then cut the stringers. Sounds like plan. And then these are stringers, and this acts as a nice title page. Like a boss, what I think I'll do is line up this corner right with the factory edge of the plywood, and that should give us a nice straight edge. This is roughly the shape it's going to be. It's, let's see, 36 inches wide, roughly, and then tw it should be exactly 24 inches tall. It's hard to know exactly where the corner is right here, so I'm actually going to cut this a little bit just to show this corner so I can align it easier. And then all you do is align this corner right here with the edge right here. Okay, it looks like the MDF isn't actually adhesing as well. This right here deserves a little mentioning. Always make sure that both work pieces are supported, but make sure that when they are supported, they don't pinch in. Right here, one of the pieces wasn't supported, so when I ran the saw through, it fell down. So yeah, really make sure you have a sawhorse on both sides and make sure it doesn't pinch in or fall down and make the whole world go crazy. This is the first completed part of the Cessna 172 project. Wow, it's an honor just being here.
<laughs> my saw force awareness grade is like a D minus by now. Someone brought up in a comment that I could have these a lot thinner. And I was like, it's gotta be thick because it can be. Then I just picked up a piece of wood I cut earlier and noticed it's actually pretty strong. So that's making me wonder if I can go right now from 2.5 down to 2 or even 1.5. This right here is 3 quarters and it fares okay. I want to do a test with a 2 inch stringer. Right here I have a longer piece of plywood and it's actually feeling pretty strong. Anyway, 2.5 was honestly quite an arbitrary number. What I'm going to try now is taking a 2.5 inch long piece of wood from this plywood that's 24 inches long and that's how long the assembly will be and I think I can get away with going down to 2 or even 1.5 inches. I'm going to try first with some OSB and then if the results aren't good, I'll try with normal plywood. It's time to get scientific. I have a few players in the game and we're going to test their strength when they're oriented like this. They're this way strength, so to speak. I have a few selections. I have 3.5, 2.5, 1.5, and 1 inch. And you can even tell flexing this way. This one doesn't have a lot of give, and this one kind of feels like a rubber band. So, let's set up our extremely scientific test. I have a backpack right here, and I have two bricks. So we're going to hang this brick pack from these and test their something strength. Uh, leave it in the comments if you know. Okay, so this is one brick. You can trust me, I'm a YouTuber. Let's put it through here and see that this first one, we stabilize it. This first one can handle a brick. So 3.5 is a good for takeoff and landing or whatever. 2.5, let's test it. that. 2.5 can support one brick. 1.5, I have some doubts. Ow. 1.5 actually works. 1.5 can support one brick. And last but not least, one inch. Oh, one inch can support one brick, but it's a little oofy. Just so you know, this is 24 inches. And that's the length of the section one. Let's try it with two bricks, shall we? <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, so uh, one inch is out of the question because it just broke as I was talking. I'm using these to get a super rough estimate and then I'm going over to the plywood and testing, doing a second test. Okay, so 3.5 inches is obviously strong enough. And then let's do our second test with two bricks and figure it out. Two bricks. Let's test 1.5 inches and 1.5 inches. Yeah, 1.5 inches is actually really strong. Even with this plywood, this OSB that's thinner, 1.5 inches is holding up like a champ. Uh, I'm honestly seriously considering this as an option. So I think I'm gonna go down to 1.5 inches and that's, that's a good standard unit because that's what two inches pretends to be. 2.5 inches is the new stringer width. It's pretty strong. It can carry two bricks. Uh, so 
I think it's good enough for my simulator. In fact, I'll even try sitting on it. I don't know. I could sit on that for a few seconds. Obviously, like 10 year old OSB is not as strong as fresh new plywood. So these tests are a little bit rigged, but you can see that that did hold up. And I think it makes a good fit for my simulator. It's kind of a chicken and the egg situation. I don't want to print my profiles until I know that they're strong enough, but I won't know that they're strong enough until I print my profiles. Uh, oh well. So I'll just cut a little bit from here to make sure it's all good. And then do another strength test. So here's the test. Uh, I actually put the brick backpack away, so we'll kind of improvise. This clamp right here is just to stabilize it. It has very little impact on the strength. Or at least so I think. This is very stupid, by the way. Don't do this at home. I am home, actually. So, so it can hold two bricks. That's my test benchmark. Uh, again, very stupid. Very stupid test. It looks like 1.5 inches is pretty strong. Yeah, I, I can't get it to move. That's good enough for me. Then again, I'm not very strong, so that might have an impact on our results. Uh, but this hammer actually is pretty strong, so we're gonna see if we can't break it. And we can. That's surprisingly easy. Or less. <laughs> oh, that brings up another point. Since this is only actually going to be a foot spaced because there's a middle rib, does it matter? Let's see, right here. And this is a hammer. I'm not going to hit my simulator with a hammer. So it's, it's good enough for me. Another thing I want to test is how well screws drill into this because I will be uh, drilling holes into this for the sheathing. It'll be kind of like this, and I'll have the sheathing plywood drilled into it. Here's some of the scrap from a previous video. We can go ahead and screw it in. So what I would do would be start by drilling this plywood. Drill a hole in the sheathing plywood. Make sure it's countersunk with this countersunk combo drill bit. And then line up the holes and screw it in. How does this hold? Wow, I'm actually surprisingly impressed. Uh, actually, this plywood bent before I think the screw stripped, so man. As for spacing, I think I'll keep it consistent with the stringer thickness and space them 1.5 inches. This plywood might be a little annoying to bend, so I can always cut this plywood and then glue it together at a bend. Kind of like this. This won't look the prettiest, so I'm gonna try to avoid it if I can. One more thing I need to test is the stringers going through both layers of plywood right here. When I screw in the stringers, I want the screw to intersect both, so I'll need a longer screw. So, screw about this long, I think two inches, should work wonders. What I'll end up doing is drill this hole, and as it peeks out just a little bit, I can use that to mark the next hole. And then drill the next hole. Then of course screw it in. I feel like I'm getting stupider making these videos. Here we are. And this is a pretty sturdy joint, I'm gonna have to say. Ah. This is a little cringy though. You'll see I actually stripped this wood right here on the stringer, which 
I would really prefer to avoid because that makes it not as strong of a joint. So what I'll really need to do is make sure that when I'm drilling this hole, I drill it thicker, basically. So there we have it. We know that the sheathing can be firmly attached to the stringers. The stringers can be pretty solid. And the stringers can attach to the ribs as long as we make sure to glue this up. So we now know that 1.5 inches is a good thickness for the ribs and we've cut out all of our rib profiles. There are a few mistakes that I'm going to cover in our next video, including some funky CAD mistakes. Watch out for that video, super excited to continue filming and editing it. I would also like to take this moment to say how grateful I am for everyone's support. You guys have been instrumental in creating this project. Thank you each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching, have a fantabulous day, and I will sim you later. That was cheesy.